Well, good afternoon, everyone. We're just going to give just a few minutes here for people to continue to join uh, the webinar. Um, and so we'll just give this a few minutes. We're gonna start it here uh, as close to being right on time as we can, uh, just to be mindful of everyone's uh, busy schedule. And so um, just hang tight here for just the next uh, minute or two, and then we'll go ahead uh, and jump uh, straight into this webinar. We are looking at the campaign settings of AngelTree. Uh, and so uh, you may want to take this opportunity to familiarize yourself with um, the GoToWebinar interface. There is the ability to um, raise your hand when the time comes to ask questions. Uh, but, but more importantly, there is the ability for you to ask questions uh, as we work our way through the webinar. Uh, our team is ready to be able to answer your questions. So as they come up, as um, things um, uh, come up that you want to ask clarification on, uh, there's a few nuances here as we have uh, attendees from all four territories in the United States in which certain scenarios or situations may only apply to one or two territories. Uh, you may want to ask uh, and seek clarity on that. But uh, a best way to be able to seek that clarity is to utilize the question tool. Um, our team is going to be monitoring, monitoring uh, that question. We do have um, the ability to um, uh, come back in future webinars and answer other questions as they come. Just as a, a quick reminder of uh, upcoming webinars, today we are going to be discussing uh, the campaign uh, settings. So this is really intended for uh, angel tree administrators. Uh, those of you that have uh, the permission called can manage angel tree are the people who really have the, the ability to access the screens that we're going to be walking through here uh, over the next hour. Um, other attendees may uh, only want to sign up for future uh, webinars. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be walking through the applicant process. Uh, and this is where we're going to show you the new applicant intake um, screen, uh, applicant intake process, which will uh, be able to significantly and, and virtually altogether minimize the potential duplication that we see between uh, household members who are non-angels and angels in the system. Um, in two weeks, uh, on Tuesday, uh, the 30th, we are going to be looking at the angel process. This is where we'll walk through the processing of, of angels and allocations and um, just exactly how that's going to uh, manifest in the 2024 season. But specifically, we'll want to highlight a, a new feature coming in 2024, uh, which is a duplicate report, which gives you the ability to search for duplicates across multiple divisions uh, to be able to see, and unfortunately, on the, the situation where someone might be trying to sign up uh, via multiple uh, instances. And so we'll walk that through on the 30th. Uh, and then on uh, August 1st, we're going to be walking through uh, a feature that was new uh, in recent years, and that is um, the uh, and that is the distribution management toolkit. And this is uh, the the newest feature of uh, Angel Tree to help you streamline and and gain better access and visibility to both the processing of angels, the specific gifts, uh, being able to know at any given moment how many of them need. Um, attention, how many of them are ready for distribution, as well as the distribution day, right? What does it look like when uh, applicants come in, uh, ready to pick up their angels, being able to walk them through that, giving you and your team complete visibility. And so it is uh, just a little bit after, uh, I, I see some hands raised. Uh, we're not going to pause here for questions just yet. So please go ahead and um, uh, put those questions in the chat. Um, our team will be able to answer those as we come through. We'll have some time at the end to be able to um, answer some questions. Uh, and so we will, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is Jeff Marquis. I am the director of TSAM Services. Uh, me and uh, our team, we run the TSAM platform, including uh, the Angel Tree module. And so we're excited to be able to walk through. Uh, this uh, this configuration side of the Angel Tree module, the campaign settings. Uh, you should know that this uh, training will be recorded and be made avail available in short order uh, in the event that you want to cycle back and uh, review a certain component, or if you maybe have someone that was a part of your team that wasn't able to join us today, you'll be able to circle back um, and be able to review this again in the future. 
Um, and so uh, one other thing that I just want to highlight as we go through this, we are doing all of our uh, our demoing, our training here today in what's called our user acceptance testing environment. So you may see some uh, faces or names that maybe don't exactly align with their current appointment. This is uh, this system is a little bit of a snapshot, uh, and this in a few instances over the last seven years of when users and locations were initially updated um, as various territories came on uh, to the system. Um, I do want to, one more thing that I want to highlight at the very end is um, I know the Central Territory and the Western Territory utilize integrations with the WellSky Community Services. Um, there are a few things in the campaign settings that will speak specifically to um, uh, those, those two territories. And so I'll circle uh, to that on the very end. I really is almost at the end of the section. And uh, in, in our campaign settings, it specifically looks to um, it specifically looks at uh, the seasonal programs, and that is how these services integrate. Uh, before we jump in, um, I, I do also want to lastly cover just a few things as it relates to activating your campaign. Uh, the process for activating your campaign will look different depending on what territory you are in. If you are in the south or the eastern territory, um, you are able to uh, go on and proceed with activating uh, your Angel Tree campaign for 2024 um, uh, as you see fit. Uh, you should know that users from the past, those local users or those um, uh, users that perhaps uh, don't have that can manage Angel Tree, uh, will not be able to gain access to the module and they will get a message that says that they need to reach out to their officer. Um, one thing that is common among all territories is the officer at a given location needs to be the one that activates the module uh, for your uh, location. And so in the east and the south, you'll go through and you will activate the module and fill out the information as it relates to billing and, and those other components. Once you do that, you will be able to move forward. In the Western Territory, you still need to activate your campaign, uh, but there is no billing screens. That is uh, through negotiation there with the territory as a whole, uh, and that is handled at that level. So each location in the West does not need to um, worry about that. However, the officer at each location does need to still go in and activate the module for the 2024 season. In the Central Territory, it's handled a little differently. Um, your access to the system is managed by your divisional social service directors. Uh, and so we get a list of locations uh, seeking to utilize the Angel Tree module for the 2024 season. Uh, and then we will go ahead and get you uh, squared away. Um, that is still in process. If you want to know the uh, exact timeline of that process, uh, please reach out to your local divisional social service director and they will be able to share um, all the information that is needed um, or the, the, that they're able to share as, as this gets finalized. I know um, uh, you're ready to get started. It's 100 degrees in Dallas today, which means we must be getting ready for Christmas. And so uh, we're looking uh, excited to be able to walk this through with you uh, and um, uh, show you the, the, the system. In case this is your first time, welcome. Um, when you come in, it, you will see something that looks along this lines. You will see, um, if, as long as you are a TSAM user, you will see potentially uh, multiple module buttons. In this case, when you come in, the very first time that you enter, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. The very first time you activate. And what the system is wanting to do is um, they're saying, do you want to import a campaign setting from previous years? Now, not all of your information is going to come forward. Obviously, the scheduling won't carry forward because those dates may uh, be slightly different. But your sites, all of your locations that were configured uh, in previous years would be available. You'll select the given campaign that you want to uh, uh, bring forward. And then once you do, you'll come forward and then you'll end up at this state. You'll end up at this place. Uh, much of your information will carry forward, including uh, all of your sites. You'll see here a very long list. We are in here as the North Texas Area Command, which has many uh, locations. It is the largest Angel Tree campaign in the United States. Last year they did, I believe it was close to 37,000 angels across the DFW Metroplex. Uh, but when you come in, uh, it's going to carry this information forward. Now. What I like to share with people is when you are coming into your campaign settings from the very beginning, the, the, in many ways, the easiest and best way to proceed through this is to simply work left to right. 
you're going to want to configure the elements uh, on step one, even though it's not called step one, starting from the left, and you work your way to the right. And if you do that largely in sequence completion, you shouldn't have some of the uh, the things that we see in which things maybe are out of order or out of um, are, are missing components. And so what we're going to do here, and we're going to work, I want to be mindful of your time, we're going to try to work uh, accurately but quickly um, as we walk through explaining uh, what each one of these um, configuration settings will uh, speak to uh, within the system itself. Now right off the bat, you may see um, a campaign selector at the top. You know, not every location will have this. This will apply for area commands only. If you have multiple Angel Tree campaigns within uh, your license location, it will appear here at the top and you will be able to select the various Angel Tree campaigns. Um, this general campaign is largely universal for the entire area command. What that means is the Angel Tag template, your camp, um, the, the, your guidelines for your angel age, all of these things are shared among the entire area command. Uh, you'll want to reach out to TSAM support if you have a scenario in which um, these this information does differ. I'll, I'll keep using North Texas locations as an example in which if Louisville, where I live, uh, has a different age requirements than Fort Worth, we're going to have to be able to handle that on our side. It can be done, but we'll need to discuss that. So you're going to want to reach out uh, to TSAM support. Uh, I'm going to have um, uh, my team go ahead and put in the comments here just a, a quick link for the support channel for you to reach out to, though I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, uh, understand and, and utilize that tool uh, very well. So when I first come in, because I carried forward a previous campaign settings, these elements will initially be set up. So in order to edit these, I need to click Edit Campaign. Once I click Edit Campaign, I can now go through and adjust this information um, as I see fit. I can change my campaign. Maybe um, instead of NTX area command, um, uh, we want to call it North Texas area command. Now, this information here, everything up to the number, uh, or at least, sorry, the middle section, is being pulled from what your location is called in TSAM. Uh, and so I know, and there's different naming conventions across the United States. And so locations in the East, for instance, are, are largely just city state. So um, Cincinnati, Ohio is the license, is the location name. So in their event, in, in their situation, it would say 2024 Cincinnati, Ohio Angel Tree. Now they may want to utilize a county name. They might, they want to utilize a, 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 a geographic area. Um, when I lived in Florida, I lived on the Treasure Coast. And so maybe you want to call it a, uh, a specific area. This is where you would change that name. Uh, the next, I'm going to set my max angel age. One thing that's going to happen now is uh, that you'll you'll see more tomorrow is when uh, the applicant goes in, they're going to enter all of their household members on one step. And based on the age that they enter, um, the system will automatically look to see, is this person eligible for Angel Tree? Um, you get to set the age as of a certain date. What that should be or could be is entirely up to you. This is entirely a business rule that you'll want to determine. We've seen ages as low as 10 and as high as 21. And it's really up to you uh, what this date range would be. However, you do need to put some value in, these, uh, in, in this field. You can't simply leave it blank and allow anyone to, to apply. Now, you'll see later on how that could be eligible, but I'll, I'll explain uh, for right now, when it comes to this angel age, it needs to be in this setting here. This next toggle here is for allowing applicants with no angels. Now, this is because there are locations that utilize angel tree for not the traditional angel tree distribution. Maybe they only give gift cards. Maybe they only um, do food boxes and they use angel tree simply as a food box uh, request and tracking uh, system. For those, of lo for those locations that, um, that want to utilize the system in that manner, you'll have to set this to yes. Basically, that, what this does is this allows an application to be submitted even if there are no eligible angels. If you don't set it to yes, unless they have a household member that's under the age of 12 by Christmas of 2024, 
there's they will not be allowed to submit the if, if i set this to no in order for an application to be submit the the application must have at least one um eligible angel based on age this next block here this next section applies to senior angels because just as much as we have locations that maybe do only gift boxes or food boxes we also have locations that uh utilize senior angels so you're going to say do i allow senior angels yes or no and then because i allow senior angels i need to set some type of guidelines for my senior angels the first of which is do i want to set a minimum senior angel age just in the same way for angels up here we set a max uh, for children, for the seniors, we have to set a minimum. It's up to you um, what this tool would look like. You also have the ability to say that there's no minimum for a senior angel. Now, locations do that often because maybe they have, uh, they allow ages uh, for individuals with special needs that maybe they don't, they're not technically a senior, but because of their circumstances, they still want them to be able to receive gifts and support at the Christmas season. And so you will set this here just so you know that when you by clicking no minimum senior angel age that means that technically every single person in the system is eligible for angel tree uh, and this uh, is a key thing to remember because um, this would mean that uh, if you have this marked as this that a 30 year old um, is able to register as a senior angel is able to is technically eligible for angel tree so you want to use this uh, sparingly um, as you go through and process. The final gift return date, you'll say, what date do I want these gifts back by? Uh, this is presented when, uh, when donors uh, adopt online, uh, when they get their uh, angel tag at the end, they are displayed. Here is the dates we need to get these gifts back by, and this is where that date comes from. Now, the one um, caveat I'll, I'll share as relates to this, within the uh, angel allocations, which we're going to talk about in two weeks, you have the ability to set a gift return date that's specific to uh, an allocation location. What I mean by that is uh, if, if Johnson Ford, even though this date is the 26th, if they have to have their gifts back by the 30th of November, you can set that and it will actually override this final gift return date and display uh, the return date for um, that specific um, partner agency, that specific allocation. The last three things here that we have, the first of which is our angel tag template. Um, most of you, unless you've opted in to have a custom angel tag designed, um, you will have one of four options. These four, uh, right now, these the ones that say standard template. Now this template is intended to be shared across the entire command. You can click a show sample here on the side and I apologize for the, the size here, but you can kind of see um, this is intended to be utilized with the angel tags that you would get from trade. Um, you would buy the tags from trade. Uh, you would put them in your, print, your printer in the correct fashion. That way, when you go to print the angel tags, again, we will cover that in two weeks on the angel uh, management component. But it pulls the information. Um, this also gives you the option uh, whether or not you want to utilize the barcode, which would be needed for um, for both Angel Tree uh, for the distribution management uh, toolkit as well as the sorting management. You'll need that barcode. The last two settings here: you have, do I want to I'll print the angel first name on the on the tag. We never print the last name, right? So I'm Jeff Marquis. Um, the most it would ever be would be Jeff, but there are circumstances in which uh, locations don't even want the first name. They only want it to, they only want the user to know that it's a male who is seven. Um, if that's the case, you would just toggle this to know. Again, this is shared across the entire campaign, uh, but this is where you would be able to uh, specify whether or not you want the first name printed. The last option here is whether or not you want to allow adopt a family. We are going to cover this tomorrow as a part of the applicant management, but this was new in 2023. Um, now I understand adopt a family really does take on um, different meanings in different locations. Now it's hard to be all things to all people. So we tried to kind of get as many as we could uh, as we navigated down, but this is basically the ability that if this is, set to yes, it allows the Salvation Army user 
to flag this family as um, an adoptive family, which then allows that family to be able to put in a, a want and a need for all household members, not just eligible angels. Um, and so we're able to capture those needs. That way, if this family needs a couch or a refrigerator or um, you know a, a bed, that could be something that gets captured through the adoptive family. Because I know there are locations that utilize corporate partners to be able to uh, utilize this feature. We're going to dive more into that tomorrow on our webinar. So if, if you're interested in the adoptive family, you'll want to go ahead and uh, circle back to um, this feature. When you're all done, you'll click Save Changes, and we're and we're set. This this campaign has been updated. And there's nothing really else for you to do other than now we're going to work our way from left to right. The next location that you're going to look at here is a site. Now, uh, a site is going to be utilized for the next four steps, intake, adoption, drop off and distribution. <clears throat> you first need to configure the site itself in which you're going to uh, name it and give it a location. So if I jump into any one of these locations and I pull it up, this allows me to do a couple things. I set my address. I set who is the responsible unit for this location, because while maybe this does technically say the Arlington core, as it relates to um, intake and, and management, we can say that the responsible party for this campaign, we can alternate that between my various locations. Obviously, if you are a standalone core, if you are Abilene, Texas, you will have one option here under responsible unit. I, I can set my name, but a cool feature that people don't always know is that I can come in here and I can move my this little pin to save exactly where I want them to go. You know, because this location, this 9216 Harry Hines Boulevard, Boulevard is a large building and I want to be able to specify to exactly where we want them to go as it relates to uh, drop off, as it relates to distribution, all those components. And so I can actually grab this pin and I can move and say, like, let's say, for instance, there's a park, we know there's a parking lot over here. And so the location, the pin is actually going to be right there. And it's giving the specific longitude and latitude of where we want that location to go. When I'm ready, make sure you save the pin location. And it's updated. At this point, we're good to go. Now, when we navigate back, you'll see um, I can go through here. One thing that is new into um, the 2020, I'm um, sorry, the 2023 season was the ability to mark sites as inactive. Because I know as we're entering, I think this is year nine of the Angel Tree module, this site list has, without question, gotten really long. And up, we were hearing from, um, the users that we needed a way to shorten this list. And so last year, we gave you the ability to make a site as inactive. So if that's the case, you do that by editing the location and simply marking the site as inactive. So once I do that, it removes it from my location. I can go through here and I can mark the site as an act inactive. Oh, I verify the address here, right? And I'm able to mark the sites as inactive. It'll hide it. Um, as we go through, as we, when, sorry, uh, sorry, I skipped ahead. One thing that we need to do here, um, let me show here. If you are in a, uh, an, a large command like uh, North Texas and you want to be able to just see the locations that are specific to uh, a given location, um, in this case, remember the responsible party uh, here, we can go ahead and um, mark these sites as inactive. Um, I can save the location info, and when I'm done, it'll be removed from the list. Now, if you want to see your inactive um, locations, you'll see here, because there's now one that's been marked as inactive, over here on the right, I can simply toggle this on, and when I toggle it on, it will bring back um, the locations that I have. Oh, forgive me, it got reset there to North Texas um, Area Command. Um, as we go back, let me look at go back to the Area Command here. Um, you'll see here that each one of my locations has um, uh, elements here that, that align with my next four tabs, intake, adoption, drop off, and distribution, because not all of your sites will be utilized for every scenario. Um, and so in order to make 
a site available for one of these options here, I simply need to check that box. Now, if I come into this Arlington core here, which has two check boxes, if I go to make the site as inactive, um, it will not allow me to do so because I have um, check boxes available. I have uh, boxes in which I need to be able to, I have to remove all of them in order for it to be eligible to be made inactive. Additionally, you'll see here under distribution that this checkbox is disabled now and we'll see that down the road, but you can see if I hover here that's because all of the configurable elements of a distribution site must be removed in order to uncheck the box. And so we don't want to, uh, we have to adjust that there. So we'll go through, you'll check the boxes that uh, apply. Um, and, and then when we're ready to move forward, I'll go to intake. Now, um, I'm going to pause here for a second, um, and I'm going to make a quick shift. Hold on, just give me two quick seconds. I'm going to I'm going to shift to our standard. I know not everyone um, uh, works with um, area commands, and so I'm going to uh, shift over here now as we work into these next sections as it relates to a single campaign. Uh, this will make make it a little bit easier for you to be able to see how that looks. So, yeah. all right, so you can see here now, we have now shifted from North Texas and we've uh, shifted over to Panama City. You see the interface looks exactly the same. Certain things are disabled because they're currently configured. I can show my inactive sites as a way um, to see they, your inactive sites appear as in uh, grayed out italics. Um, here you're able to go through and, and get that squared away. So we're gonna keep moving ahead. So first we're gonna go over to our intake sites. Um, all of my intake sites that are here um, are here because they've been marked as an intake site here. You can see there's one, two, three available. Now we're gonna, again, in the same fashion, we're gonna work from left to right to configure. And we're gonna configure this William Booth Center here at the bottom. Now there's two ways in which um, we can do intake. Um, the first of which is in-person um, intake and the other which is online intake. Now, I know there's varying degrees of uh, adoption of online intake. It was a requirement, you know, three and four years ago when we were in COVID. Nowadays, many locations are doing a mixture of in-person and uh, virtual um, intake or uh, online intake. But if you want to utilize an appointment schedule, right? So this is where we want to give the uh, public the ability to request appointments. The first thing I need to do is I need to set up my appointment scheduler. To do so, I click this gray edit pencil here just to the left. The first thing I'm going to do is just with distribution, I'm going to set how many um, appointments do I want to have in each one of these intervals. I set my segment time here. So let's say we're gonna do 30 minute intervals. So I'll update. So now I've got my 30 minute intervals and I wanna have 10 applications every 30 minutes. To do so, I can come in here um, and I can get this squared away. I can change my date range here. Let's say I wanna go starting on the fifth. And so I'm simply gonna come in and I click and drag. And I click and drag. And I do this for all every day that I'm going to be doing intake. So I can go through here and I've, I'm setting each one of these appointments. This interface, if I want to update this, so um, right now I've scheduled, I've made slots for 500 appointments. Um, now, if you say, oh, we only ever do 400 and so I don't even wanna give people the option, let's, let's come back later from lunch and you wanna remove these. The way you do that is to update your application segment I'm gonna update that to zero, and then I'm gonna go, where do I want to remove it? And I'm gonna remove that. So let's say, because we have the slots, 450 gives me the buffer I need. Uh, and so we're gonna give ourselves a, a, a broader um, lunch period to be able to come back after the, the busy intake period. Here, I, I will enter any information that I want to be communicated to the applicant. Uh, be sure to bring in copies of your IDs and birth certificates for all household members. Really, it, it's really up to you what, if anything, you want to communicate at this phase. So once I've done that, you can see I've closed. I've set my intake scale calendar. 
but I, I haven't set my appointment goal. Um, that's going to happen over here in a second. But one thing I'm able to do here is, um, let's say for the appointments, there's specific forms that we want them to print out or have access to. If I want to have, and this is only for the appointment feature, um, if I want to email documents, I click that uh, little uh, paper clip. And when I do, I can choose a document that will be sent to them upon their appointment confirmation. Now, I do want to quickly reiterate the process here. This applicant is not booking an appointment time. What they are doing is they are they're going online and, and um, our team will put the email address that they can go into, uh, that they will go to, they'll put their zip code in. And if there's available slots, <coughs> excuse me, um, they will be able to request an appointment. They're not scheduling an appointment. All they're doing is requesting an appointment. We'll go more into that tomorrow as a part of the applicant process, uh, but they are not just openly choosing. There's still some vetting um, uh, from the Salvation Army to be able to, for lack of a better term, confirm their appointment. They're just saying that we want to be able to uh, apply. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this online interface. And so here what's going to happen is, um, the first of which I'm going to set my online appointment requests. This block here applies only to the interface in which allows them to request an appointment. So it can be open and closed. This is something that is um, managed by the, by the administrators of the angel tree. I also set my max number. Now you may remember that we, we allowed for 450 slots, but that doesn't mean that we want to have 450 people uh, book appointments. I can set my max number as 400. What this allows us to do is this sets the limit for the request. So if I am person 401, even if that appointment hasn't been confirmed, the system will keep them from requesting the appointment. We, we don't want to give the illusion um, that maybe that something is, uh, that, that, that something is proceeding forward. Um, this, this is for their appointments, uh, for them to come in and fill an application in person. That's this top section. This next section is related to my online application. This is those that go on to saangeltree.org and they fill out their information, they, um, they submit their documents, they do everything, um, for lack of a better term, virtually. Uh, in many ways, lessening the burden on our applicants uh, that sometimes could require them to take time off work, find babysitters, find transportation uh, to be able to come physically into the office on a given day. In the same way, I'm going to open and close my appointment requests here at the top. I'm also going to open and close my online applications. Right now, this opening is still a manual process. And so what I mean by that is, if you tell the public that on October 1st, the applications will be available, someone who has the Can Manage Angel Tree permission will need to go online and uh, open those applications. In the same way, we set a max number for appointments. We can also set a max number for uh, online applications. One quick word of note here is this is an application, not an angel. What I mean by that is at the point of request, we don't know if this person has one angel or if they have five angels. So when you talk about your max number, you're going to want to do some form of math that helps you understand we typically do a thousand angels and there's typically three angels or three angels per household on average. And so if that's the case, we're going to want to do somewhere around 340 uh, slots. And you can always come in and edit this as needed. If, you've, if you're hitting your thousand mark a little bit too soon, come in and bring it down from 340 to 310 or vice versa. You hit 340, they're closed, but you still have space for 200, uh, 200 more angels. So you're going to go in and up that account. Um, invitation code is whether or not you're going to require them to have an invitation code in order to proceed with an online application. Um, this will go, we'll go into more of this tomorrow with the applicant. And then here I'm going to enter in my serviceable zip codes. If you use, if you used Angel Tree in the past, you know exactly what uh, this uh, contains. And so here, what's going to happen is I'm going to, going to simply put in my zip code. Right? You put in what your zip codes are, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to save my zip codes. Now, you should know that every zip code can only be controlled by one entity, right? The system needs to know that if I put in zip code 78876, 
do I need, I need to be able to go in and um, uh, they have to know what campaign to, uh, to tie them to, to slot them to. When I'm all done, I'll go ahead and click save. And so now I've been set up here. And this is where the, the first big gotcha that we get, that we get many uh, requests that come to TSAM support for. And that is people get to this point and then they stop. And then they wonder why they can't process their applications. If this is an intake location, now I'm gonna remove these here. Every intake location, in order to be a truly valid intake location needs to have some like wait, some distribution, right? There has to be an in and an out related to this intake site. So if it says none, everyone who applies from 78876 will never get past the submitted status because in order to do so, you have to have a distribution appointment. If I don't have any distribution approved distribution sites, I can't very well give a distribution appointment. So here, I'm going to come here and it's going to simply select the options that I have uh, to be able to um, to go through. And I can see the options that I have here. These are the different uh, locations that have been marked on my site as a distribution site, these four. Now understand you'll see here that North Warehouse is shared between both of these locations. You can have 10 intake sites and one distribution site, and that is perfectly acceptable in many ways logical. Um, but the, the key component is that every intake site must have at least one distribution site in order for you to process an angel from submission to uh, admin approved and, and being able to have it be allocated and angels printed. We're going to skip through these next ones pretty quickly because they're actually fairly basic. Uh, the adoption and the drop off um, tab here are simply setting date ranges that will ultimately get displayed to the user when they adopt, when they go to the public angel tree site. And now this site here, if I come into this North Warehouse that we already configured, it's I'm not setting it's available on this day and this day and it's intermittent. I'm going to say, when does my schedule start? In this case, it starts, well, we'll, we'll jump ahead to 2024. Let's update this. So we're simply going to say um, the intake is, uh, the adoption is going to begin on September 1st. Oh, sorry, forgive me, I've got, I've got I can't do these things out of order. So the adoption is going to take place from October 1st to October 31st in the system. And it's going to be Sunday through Monday. Now, if you remember, we had to set the intake to be zero when it was distribution. In the same way, if I want to remove these Sunday slots, I just simply change the segment to closed and I can reset these back to, uh, to be removed. The same way we can go through and update that. It'll tell me we currently have set up for 40 hours a week worth of adoption. And the exact same interface applies for drop-off. I, I wanted to skip past that. We'll circle back if we need to, but those are pretty uh, straightforward. Um, our distribution sites is the, uh, is the next area where people sometimes get themselves into a little bit of trouble um, because they're being a little bit too specific. When I go in, if I want to configure this Panama City Community Center, I'm going to first set my schedule. Now, I set my schedule for distribution um, here at the bottom. So I'm going to go to the week of the 16th, uh, September 16th. Just like we did the appointment schedule, now we're going to do our distribution. I want to dis distribute 10 people every 15 minutes. Now, I can change this. To, I can change this to two hour blocks. Maybe we have a much broader distribution schedule and we're going to allow 100 people to come in every two hours. It gives just a broader range. It's really up to you how specific you want to be with your uh, distribution system, right? Do you want people to give a window of 15 or 30 minutes to show up or two hours? It's really up to you. <coughs> Once I have this, I'll same thing, I'll do my, I'll select my dates here and I'll go through and I'll set my distribution ranges here. Now I can just click and drag to say uh, I've gone through. Now you can see here um, that I've gone through um, and I've got, I currently have enough distribution slots for 2000 families. Uh, that may be completely crazy to some of you and that may be way too little for some of you. Uh, but this is how you would set that. 
The next component here is you have to set a distribution code. Now this distribution code is limited uh, to five characters. We typically tell people to limit it to two or three uh, characters. Um, in this case, because it's the Panama Community Center, I'm gonna call it PCC. That's my distribution code. In the end, this distribution code is only a code that, you, that applies to you. It lets you know who does this angel apply to, especially for those of you that have multiple distribution sites multiple core as a part of your area command, you'll want to make that um, set. Now, this is where people often get into trouble. Um, we, we, let's say we want to have space for 500 families. And so it makes sense that I'm going to start with family code one, and I'm going to go through family code 500. Now, this seems completely logical, right? I, I, I want to do 500 families, and I set this. The problem is, the moment you schedule one, distributions, um, one distribution appointment for this location, this number gets, for lack of a better term, locked down, right? It becomes uneditable. And every year people reach out to us and say, we need more distribution codes. Can you make it to be 520, 540? You really, you set the number. The only thing that needs to take place as it relates to these distribution codes is that the number, right, one through 100, can only exist once in that location. So in the, in the case of North Texas, they have to be more creative, right? So Louisville will get one to 1,000 and Fort Worth will get 1,001 to 2,500. And it's gonna, it has to stack in that fashion. But there's no reason that we can't create buffers and create uh, an overage. That just because I schedule 2,000 slots doesn't mean that I'm now all of a sudden locked into distributing to 2,000 families. I might still only have 400 families that I'm utilizing, but I've scheduled 2,000 slots. Additionally, we always tell people that whatever your uh, family max is, if your max is 400 families, give yourself a solid 20, 30, 50% buffer on top. It doesn't hurt anything uh, for you to be able to give yourself those extra numbers. So instead of setting it, if I wanna do 500 families, if it was me configuring it, at minimum, I'm gonna have my family codes go to 600. Maybe I want it to go up to 700, 800. The key component here is that this is a stressful time. We wanna be as flexible as possible. And so giving us that buffer is gonna save you time down the road to keep you from having to um, have to adjust that code. Some of you already do this and that's great, but hopefully more of you can kind of adopt that. In the same way, we're gonna add our special care codes. In this case, we're gonna go 601, to um, 800, right? There, I got 200 special care. All right, when I'm ready, I'll save my changes. Everything is good to go. Save the database. Now you can see here, this is fully configured. I have my distribution code. I have my family codes, my special care codes, and I am good to go. Everything about this campaign here aligns. We've got four distribution sites. None of the numbers overlap. You can see here, um, the Panama City Core, P-A-N-N, -N, doesn't start till the number 20,000. It doesn't affect anything. It's just a number that helps you for tracking. So one thing we've seen locations do is they set a number. They say, you know, that the, the 10,000 range is for this location. The $20,000 range, $20,000, 20,000 range is for another location. That way, even beyond the distribution code, you can use the numeric value to also reiterate um, uh, the, the location that an angel, uh, an applicant is associated with. As we work our way to the right, um, I'm going to, I'm not going to walk through every single one of these screens here, but I do want to cover the three different categories uh, and then what the settings mean within the system itself. Um, you have three different intake methods. Angel Tree Public, as you might imagine, this is the questions that are asked um, at the online um, at, at intake, online Angel Tree. Special care is used for the purposes of registering large groups of people. So this is intended for those schools in which the, the, the school is registering 20 kids or for a, a nursing home in which they are registering 20 senior angels. That way each person isn't going in and doing um, all of the intake. Uh, it's, it's one person doing the intake request for all of them. And then lastly here, we have our family applicant intake. So let's jump into the public intake and I wanna walk through these uh, screens. You can see here, there's lots of data points that you can 
in large part omit ask or require now some of them are disabled and that is because those are territorial settings that whether it be because of an integration with well sky or other circumstances um, the the territory has said you must capture this data um, the other fields here are optional right do you want to know the race of the applicant All right this information here is only specific to the head of household and you're going to work its way through all of these components all of this can be asked, required, or omitted. Oh, sorry about that. Um, if I, the preferred language, maybe I don't even want that question presented to the applicant. I can go ahead and if I remove it here from asked, it's not even going to be presented to the applicant as a part of their intake process. When I'm ready, I'll click next and it's gonna walk through every one of my steps. Here is my household members. And you'll see if you're from um, the central or the west, you've got a lot more disabled fields here because of the WellSky integration. The, these settings vary from territory to territory. Obviously in Panama City, I'm here in the Southern Territory uh, to do this demo. Uh, as I work my way next, I wanna spend a few minutes here at the angel list um, because sometimes we get requests from, a, we need um, a specific data point to be captured. We wanna be able to find, um, uh, answers to a grade. Maybe you want to find out what grade they're in. Or uh, we have a uh, we have a, a donor that provides a, a blanket or a book, and so they need to know: Do you want a, a, a superhero book, a, a, a doll book, a geography book? I don't know. You set the criteria, but there is a way for you to be able to set that up in the system. Additionally, another I, I was just talking with an officer in the Southern Territory, and they had because they were using need as a, an open field text box in which the applicant could put whatever they want, they, the first time they put in, they said they needed a car. And when they said, well, these are needs for the child, they said, well, the child will ride in the car. Uh, and they said, no, we can't give you a car. And they said, okay, we need a couch. Well, this is, this is a need for the child, not for the, well, the child will sit on the couch, right? So we, we and as a way to combat that, especially through online intake where you don't have someone that for lack of a better term is vetting their submissions, you use this custom pick list is what we call it. And at this point, I'm going to go through and I'm going to clarify what options do I want to be presented to which types of angels. So I can go through here and I can say on the need list, I'm going to add a list and let's say a, 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 need, is a, um, a need is a blanket. And we want this to be available for anyone from the ages zero to 15. I'm just outside the range. But the next one I want it to be is um, maybe you could say uh, a crib, right? It's a need. Maybe you have donors that are willing to open that. Well, that's only available for people who are zero to three. And so what happens is when the angel puts in their age, depending on how old they are, will show you Will, will display certain options and they, they won't be able to type in anything. They have to select from a certain list. I know that this could be time consuming, but what I can tell you, especially as I talk to like our friends in North Texas, their list is fairly extensive. I think it has like 50 different options that are on there, but um, it allows them to go so much faster in the, in the processing because you're not having to go back to the donor and say, we. We, a PS5, we can't put that on there. Inevitably, there's always a, a, a unspoken dollar figure as it relates to a request uh, that your campaign uh, does. And the best way to be able to handle that is through utilizing these pick lists. When I do and I click save, I'm able to go in and set this list. And because this only applies to the online, when, it, when you do the family intake where I'm uh, sitting across from someone doing distribution, maybe that is a free form text field because you have someone vetting their request. So when they say, I need a car or I need a PS5, uh, they can say, well, that doesn't fit within our guidelines. Can you pick something that is under a hundred dollars or it gives them some flexibility. Uh, additionally, as I come down here, if I wanna edit here, there was a question of wanting to get sock sizes, right? We do shoe sizes, but not sock sizes. Because of that, I can both show here the custom field name as sock size I can call it anything I'd like to say. Additionally, I dictate whether or not this shows up on the adoption site. 
So maybe this question is only for internal processing because we have that donor from Women's Auxiliary that buys every child a book, she buys them in bulk. We don't need to present that to the public at large, um, that it's only through this interface um, uh, that, that, that we will dictate, are they getting a, a superhero book or a geography book, right? But if it does need to show on the site, you simply click that box, click save, and now that's going to show up online. A few more things that I wanna show you here. Um, I'm, I'm gonna skip past this. You can see here the budget. You can bypass the entire step as a whole. Um, and I can go ahead and click ask. I know we're coming close. We're coming down uh, the home stretch. We'll be able to have some time. I know we set this for an hour. Uh, we will be able to stay on a little bit longer afterwards to be able to answer questions as they come up. But I do wanna get this uh, through in the next 10. I know there's some hands raised. Uh, so please be patient. We will circle back, utilize that question section um, of the webinar uh, to be able to ask those questions as they come along. All right, uh, really there's only two more sections we're gonna talk about today. And that uh, the first of which is documents. Um, these are simply the ability for me to require certain documents of certain types of household members. So you can see just as I walk through this configuration, in this case, in this case the birth certificate is required for every angel but not every applicant or household member. So what that means is when they go to submit, the system is going to look for one birth certificate for every angel in the system. So if there's three angels, it's going to look for three birth certificates. It's gonna look for the, the comparative amount. Uh, the same thing with the driver's license. In this case, it says only the applicant and household members need to supply driver's license, not, this, not the angel, obviously, they don't have angels. Um, you, and you can go through, and this is a completely free form text that you can go through and say, in this case, you can see here, lease isn't enabled right now. So I can simply say, okay, we want the lease agreement from just the applicant. Maybe you want to be able to see uh, what, it, uh, what it is in place. Um, so it's up to you what questions are asked. You can remove them by unchecking the box and by uh, clicking the remove icon there. If I click the remove icon from driver's license, even if I don't uncheck, it'll remove it from the applicants themselves. So that's the required documents. The last section here is online. Now the online section um, is where we have two types of online interfaces. The first of which is the public angel tree website. And the other side is the public adoption site, both of which have their own controls. I can turn off the public site but keep the online adoption one on uh, if you want to serve or vice versa. I can set the public visibility on and the online adoption off. It's really up to you uh, what exactly uh, settings you want to contain. If you wanna see a quick link to that, you can always click these. But before I do that, I'm gonna work my way through. And this is all very, uh, to, to, to me, self-explanatory, right? What is displayed, right? What is the area name? So remember we called the camp, it's the Panama City Angel Tree. But when they go to the public site, that this area name, is what gets displayed. Oh, sorry, is what gets displayed here up at the top, uh, up here in this location, right? Panama City, the short name. If there's a specific donation URL, maybe you've set up a, a virtual kettle uh, as it specifically relates to Angel Tree adoption. Uh, you can put that specific URL there. Um, as I scroll down further, I set two things related to online adoption. How many angels are they allowed to adopt in a single attempt? right? Sometimes people do this because they don't want someone to take 20 angels uh, at a time and only return three. So you can set what your maximum session is, as well as what icons get utilized on the online interface. You can have the pink and blue or the male female here uh, with the red and black. As I scroll further down, we've got multiple URLs that will manifest itself on the page itself. This donate online, these various components here as I scroll through. But you can see here that I have control over what gets shared. Some of you, many of us don't actually customize this as much as we probably could. So this slide here, um, I, wanna, I wanna go in and I wanna pick a different picture. Maybe I wanna grab this picture here and I wanna change information about adoption, but this feels weird to have the text over here. And so I'm gonna change the position position of the text. Oh, this looks best in the top right, because that's kind of a dead space on the picture. 
And so I can go through and I can um, put all this information there. I control what text appears. And I get to do that for all three of these slides. Those slides come in uh, to place here on, these, on, these, on this carousel of images. This is where those uh, manifest on the public site. I'm able to highlight um, a, a certain quote, whether it be a Bible verse or a quote from uh, a, a local person in your community. I can share specific information um, ar around general information of the Angel Tree program that gets displayed here. Um, and as I scroll further down, I have my, my YouTube video ID. If you have a separate video that you want to share, you can put that video ID here. Um, and then lastly here, this is like a step-by-step a, a -step process of how does Angel Tree work in your command? Go to Town Square Mall and adopt an angel. Bring it back to the local office at this, and then you, you can kind of set as it goes through all the step-by-step -step process of step one through step six. Um, and so as you, we can work our way through. The last sections down here is I can include some specific information around my campaign. You can see here that these first four paragraphs are static. That if he, that oops, sorry, up here. That appears here at this page. So these four paragraphs here are static and don't change. However, this location here is, is, is information that you control. That's what appears in this box here. And so if you, if you want to highlight the history, maybe the number of angels you distributed last year, maybe the, the, the key partners that you've had in the past, whatever you want to highlight at this section, you can. It's, it's a history of community involvement. Lastly, down here, you have the ability to tag uh, partners in two different ways. The first of which is simply in name, right? So if you've got a corporate partner, um, that appears at the bottom here. See Panama City Angel Tree Corporate Partners. This is where if you've got many lists that you want to highlight, uh, you can put them here at this page. Additionally, you may have a presenting sponsor, someone who is um, really underwriting the, the majority, if not all of your Angel Tree costs. Um, that information, that and allows you to upload a banage, ba sorry, a banner image, banner image or banage, whichever you want to call it. Um, that's going to show up here and you upload this. Now you will want to work with um, your team because it does need to be in the correct file type and in the correct dimensions, which is a standard leaderboard banner. But when you do that and when you upload it, it puts that information on both the public angel tree as well as the adoption site uh, as a banner kind of right across uh, for everybody. Um, and so that's the online interface. Um, the URL uh, for those locations are shared here at the top. You can get that by simply clicking on the link to be able to open up, or you can copy and paste from here uh, the URL that's specific. Um, if you do want to utilize uh, a, a tool that we've seen locations utilize, maybe you don't want to circulate this long specific uh, Angel Tree website, um, you can, I, I believe it's fairly inexpensive and depending on the rules of your territory, you might want to work through your divisional headquarters, but you can simply get a donate domain, which is fairly inexpensive and have it redirect. So maybe you want to grab um, Salvation Army or, or Angel Tree of Ab Abilene, Texas dot com, and it could redirect specifically to this uh, adoptive site, this uh, or this Angel Tree site, however you determine. Um, the last thing I want to talk about here in the last minute and a half before we open up to questions is seasonal programs. This, and this is where I'm at the jump across the three different expressions. The first of which in the, in the basic sense is uh, what we're seeing here. And this is what, if you are in the South or the East, you will see. This is simply saying, um, are there specific programs that we want to track and report um, uh, as it relates to a specific applicant. So what this does is I'm able to add a program. Let's say I want to add uh, uh, Santa's breakfast. Maybe that you have this is something that happens in your community, and not everyone is, not everyone is eligible for Santa's breakfast. Uh, but you take a hundred applicants and you want to be able to mark them. So I've got Santa's breakfast. It's only available to the intake site at the William Booth Senior Center because this is actually a senior program that on a Thursday, Santa comes in for 100 seniors and comes and has breakfast um, with them as a visit. When we go to process an applicant, Santa's breakfast for all intake 
locate applications for the William Booth Center. Um, we'll be presented with the option, we'll talk about that tomorrow, to flag that application as being a part of this Santa's breakfast. Um, this is the interface for um, the, uh, forgive me, for the, the south and the east. And now I'm going to quickly just give me two quick uh, moments. We're going to shift over to uh, the central. We're going to kind of work our way uh, from basic to most complex interface um, here. And so if you are in the central territory, you will see something that looks like this. So you'll see here now I'm in the Bay City, Michigan uh, core. Um, you'll see here there are default programs. If I go to add, these are automatically included. And they, they have your um, WellSky codes, this uh, PH2950.1500-120. Um, this information uh, is there. You'll see that the forums and assistance is disabled because that's automatically enabled uh, for all of them. However, um, you still need to go through into the system and tell them which locations may or may not utilize Christmas baskets or Christmas meals. Right now, uh, you have to use your judgment. Santa's breakfast, for instance, would fall in the category of a Christmas meal. So if that's the case, what I'm doing is I want to add in, I'm going to flag the Christmas meals. And maybe because you want to still be able to filter, you, you can still add Santa's breakfast here. So I can still add that here at the bottom. So I can use that for reporting. But the key thing is that this Christmas meals flag needs to be toggled on on the applicant in order for the system to post the service in the community services. That's the that's the central version of this. The last here is going to be the, the West version here. So just bear with me for two seconds as I um, shift over to this campaign. All right. All right. So now what you're seeing is in the Compton core, um, as they go through, they have the similar functionality in the sense where you have you have a few more options here um, that were configured by your territorial headquarters. Additionally, you have the ability to create a default value. Uh, and this isn't utilizing the central just yet. In the West, they set a value, you know, one angel tree box is worth uh, uh, $100 or $100, whatever you set the parameters are. So if I do a Christmas meal, I can toggle that on. And then if I want to edit this, I'll say the default unit is one and the default value is $5, right? And so now every time I add that as an, as a, uh, a service, um, the default value will be one and $5. Now you should know that what happens is when you actually go to toggle that, we'll talk again, we'll talk about this tomorrow, but when you add that in on the applicant screen, um, you can change this number for each applicant. This is just the default value that will be applied um, initially. Um, and so this brings us all the way through. Uh, I know I see lots of questions. Um,